Hi everyone. In this particular demo, we're going to take a dive back into the digital scene. This one is going to be about how to create your own brushes for fur and feathers. Now keep in mind, this is what I want to show you how to do. So it's nice to download brushes to see what's going on, but if you follow the demo from start to finish, you'll be able to make your own. That way you could use them how you need to use them. It may not be for fur or feathers. It may be some kind of specific pattern. It could be anything. This is going to be a very simplistic look at how to duplicate a pattern over and over just to reproduce whether it be uh, fur or feathers, but then also I'll post a link now that if you want to see also about when I use this same method to reproduce a pine tree branch to be able to randomly make pine trees out of just one little simple stamp. Now this is going to be uh, pretty in-depth, so please watch it from start to finish, meaning that it's going to show you how to make these textures at any degree you want. Very simple to very specific, very detailed, and of course you could jump off anywhere you want once you learn how to make your own. Now this particular brush saves tons of time, so it is a brush you could use for further birds, fur-bearing animals, whatever the case may be, this is usually not just a one-time brush. We'll make feathers going one way, and then we'll take that same pattern, flop it over horizontally, so we have a pattern and a brush going with feathers the other way. Very simple. So. Let's first take a look at some really detailed pictures of some mammals and some birds just to see what we're going to try and reproduce. Then that way that will give us a really good idea what we are trying to do. Because to a certain extent, some feathers and fur are a little bit deceiving unless you really get a close-up look at them. Let's go ahead and take a look at those photos. Okay, let's take a look and see what we got here. I'm going to open this up. We'll open up our first picture. I'm going to go to scratch pad just so we could write on these photos. And here's what we're looking for. Now you can see the real furry looking like feathers here. And that is right in here. They kind of crisscross each other. But what I want to show you is these right in here. This is actually right here is the actual feather. Let me see if I can find a good one right there. That's the feather right here, and then they come off like this. But in some of these areas up in here, you get just the very ends, but they're actually the feathers like right here. This one comes down this way, and then they go this way, and this way. And the real long, fuzzy, furry feathers that you see are actually a feather just like this one right here and then it goes this way and this way now those are the kind of things that we're going to try and reproduce let's turn that one off we'll clear our scratch pad let's go to the next one and then this is the same thing that you could see how intense some of these could get here's a very good one i picked all these photos out for a reason Again, I only work with my own photos. Here's one right here. It goes like this, and then all of them go like this real long and fuzzy. And that's just one feather that does that. Here's another one right next to it. And the way they overlap is how you're getting your furry feather patterns. But again, the same thing. Now these up in here are the same, but then now look at these over here. This is the feather right here, and then they come off like this. So depending on where the feather is on the bird, you're going to have different patterns. Now, to most folks, this may not mean a whole a lot, but depending on how detailed you want to paint an animal, then it may mean a lot. Or more importantly, if you want to take a big portrait of a bird and then make it real large of just a portrait then you may need to know a lot of that detail. Otherwise, you can paint it loose or just represent uh, color changes uh, by just gobs of paint or what have you. So you could choose to do it how you want. 
but we're going to make brushes to duplicate those feather patterns if you need to do it, or more importantly, if you want to just actually start with some kind of a base coat of painting, and we will do that, and then finish up with just a couple of our brush feather or fur strokes here and there, just to add a very quick detail uh, to your final steps. Okay, let's turn that one off. We're gonna go through these and we will empty that one out. And then let's go to the tough titmouse, the same thing. And again, no matter what kind of bird we use, the, the, a lot of these are the same. Here's a real good one right here. This one goes like this, and then they go this way, and then they go this way. And that's just one feather giving that fur look. So these are the things we're gonna keep in mind. Let's go on to the next one, because I wanna show you that now, here is the same thing, but now keep in mind, every one of the tips of these feathers are white. So this is where we could use our transparent lock. Once we start making these feathers, we could keep them on their own individual layers, or we could uh, use the transparent lock and start coloring in just the tips of the feathers once we lay down a single color of a, another color and then uh, take uh, whatever color we need to go back over top of that feather pattern and make it uh, the tips a different color. Okay, let's go to the next one quickly. And this is what I wanna show you next. This is where they start to get pretty intense. Because now uh, with this red-bellied woodpecker, every feather has a pattern. Not only is it furry in the ends, but then it's black striped. So there's a black pattern in the middle. And then you can even see where the black is right here, they go to a point, and depending on how accurate you want to be, then this is the kind of reference we would need, and then also what we would have to do, and then again with the wing feathers, uh, these are the primaries, and these are the secondaries and tertiaries, and these are the ones that this is one feather right here, and then this is another feather right here, and that's the way these would look that they would be black on top and then go to white. And that is something that we would have to reproduce. So keep in mind, if you're just gonna make feathers and a pattern, that's one thing. But then the same thing with these, this is one feather here, this is one feather here, and then they're actually striped. Uh, barred is what it's called. Uh, but the important thing is just to take notes of how much these feathers, the same thing. Here's one right here. Then, it, then they go real furry. And again, depending on where the feather is on the bird, it may have a very specific shape to it. These up in here, uh, they start to get short and furry. And you can see that we can work this opaque and start off with darker colors and then take feather patterns over those and you'll create a really nice depth also. Okay, let's go to the squirrel now for fur let's eliminate that and now this is the squirrel pattern but now you could see how intense this hair could get now this is a fur pattern but then all the fur without a doubt is going specific ways these are going up this way these are going out for the ears and then uh, anywhere else you could see how they're going this way and then once it gets below the eye, they start going another direction. And and when, where they meet, these will go this way, and then these will go this way. And then you'll get like a little crest here, so to speak, of where the fur meets. And then a lot of these, and in, especially in the tail, you can see these fuzzy ones. We'll get into that next. But you can see this is a mixture of a real deepish gray uh, background with with uh, gold and white and black hairs on top and that is because we are going to go to this one and that is right here this is what's called guard hairs and if you look at the tail you'll just see that white glow around it but what it is is actually the, the fur itself is starting out as tan coming off the tail itself 
Then it goes into black. Here's the tan, here's the black, and then it goes into what's called white, and these are the guard hairs that actually protect the fur itself. Now that's a very specific pattern. So in other words, with one hair, you got a tan here, a black here, and a white here. That's all in the same piece of single hair from the fur. Okay, now this is a close-up again. This is pretty, let's go back in just real quick. And you can see what all is going on, how many different patterns they go to and where the, the fur goes. And then you could tell that you just follow the, the uh, eyes. And then this goes this way. And when they meet together again, they, they build that little mound of fur, so to speak. And we're going to see that real good next on our last picture. And this is what I want to show you next, though. And that is this right here. Let's zoom into this. And that is these shapes right here. Now, what we could do is start with dark colors. But then once you start making your fur with a transparent lock, then we can make that this part of the fur darker and go off into the background. And I'll show you what I mean when we start doing it. But when we design our pattern, what we will do, uh, spoiler alert, we're gonna make our hairs and then we're gonna take our eraser over this part of it and feather it off into just the paper. Then this way, when we use that pattern, this will be real sharp and pronounced, but then it'll blend off into whatever color is already there. That will be the trick of these brushes. Okay, and then let's go to the last one, which is this one right here. And again, the same thing with this kind of fur. This is just a little fawn, white-tailed deer. You can see how many different directions the fur is going. So this is going this way, this is going this way, and then wherever it meets, then you can see how some of the hairs, there is a texture to the fur, in other words, there's deeper shadowed parts right here, right here, in between the fur, and we could do that just by starting off with darker colors and then building our fur with a lighter values of the fur itself. And you can see that how many different directions the fur just on the legs are going. Again, don't need to get this critical if you don't want to. You could even just go by just gobs of color over the whole entire deer and make the base a little just a creamy white and then tans and then the white spots and not use any texture of fur at all that is entirely up to you how much detail you want to get some types of art call for it and other types don't and that is it now what we're going to do i'm going to close this group out we're going to open up this group and we're going to start and what i did was I recycled a drawing from a previous demo, and this is what we're going to work with. Let's go ahead and get started now. Okay, let's take a look and see what we have. Now, this is just that painting of the house finch I did a couple of different ways a while back. I can put the links up now. And what I want to show you is this is a basic thumb of what I did just for a start of a brush, and we'll work with that one just to start, and we can make a few new ones too. Uh, we will also do it with fur later, but right now we're gonna work on feathers. And here is what I wanna show you though. This is how many different ways we can make them. Now I even made these all by hand, and if we make them real sharp like these are, then what we could do is make a very clean one and then just one, but then even copy that one over and duplicate it if I copy this one over enlarge it shrink it down whatever we want and then place those side by side but then once I get my group together then I can flop it and then that would be the exact same ones going the opposite direction but there are different kind here and I'll show you why even this one right here they're a little bit uh, chubbier only because uh, that is for real small tufts and I have to make them heavier only because once you start shrinking down the size of the brush, these thin lines here would just about be non-existent. And they'll start to come out as almost dotted lines. Uh, and that is at 300 DPI. So keep that in mind. 
that once you start working on them, you may have to work on something that you're using at the scale and DPI you're working with. So what we're going to do is uh, open up what I want to show you. And that is right here of where all of these would be used. And that is this right here. Now this is the photo and I am not done with the painting yet, but this is the painting. So now we could see where all of those furry fuzzy brushes would help that I have tannish gold ones way down underneath. Uh, this particular painting has about 130 layers, uh, believe it or not. But I like to work on multiple layers like that because I have some just individual plumes right here. That is just one single plume. And I'll show you again, like right here, this one right here. And I will stagger the sizes. And that is what the bird calls for because when I turn that off, here's those single plumes right here. Right here's one, here's one, here's one here. And then here's some fuzzy ones up here. But then some of these are the single plumes uh, that are just the uh, more or less uh, feathers uh, that they're just the, kind of like the showy uh, decorative feathers that a great blue heron has. And that is what I was trying to duplicate. So there is the one last time. There's the photograph. And then here's the painting. Okay, now let's go back and see what we are going to work with and we may have to rearrange again because i didn't save it as is okay we'll turn these off that is what we're going to be working with now keep in mind uh actually this is the photograph that i was working from for the drawing again and this is how much detail could be in those feathers so keep in mind, all the tips are white. Uh, there are some rose colors in there, very nice uh, detail. And again, if you'd want to make a really big portrait of a, just a bird head, but then put in that much detail of each and every individual feather, uh, that would be an interesting portrait. Okay, now let's go ahead and get started. We're going to use uh, this thumb right here, and we will go ahead and get started on this. Let's take a look at this thumb here. That's this one here. But those lines are a little bit too thin. And what I don't want is once they're that thin, we have to make them a little bit heavier. So when we start uh, making the brush size smaller, the lines will not actually disappear or get dotted at the very least. Now let's make a new one here. But what I want to do is show you first how to make a nice clean plume, one single plume. And that would be like this. I have just my regular mask. All it is is like a pen type brush. Opacity is all the way up to 100 and it's at size 8. And I'm going to try and just make a nice long swoosh. That's not too bad. We'll use that end as the tip. Now what I want to do is this. Take that layer, duplicate it, and then take my move tool. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to take that. And then we're going to put it at a slight angle. And then we're going to match them back up again. Just like this. And there. And I can even rotate it just a little bit more to make it thicker. And this will be how we could get a really clean line. One single line. Right there. Hit OK. Go back to our size, and there you go. We have a nice, nice thin line. Now all I have to do is color this in and end it however I want. And then that's it. Now we have a nice thin line with a really nice taper to it, because keep in mind, that's 250%. We're seeing it now. So if I take it down to actual size, that would work pretty good. Now, what I would do is then is combine these two layers right here, this one and this one of what I just duplicated. And then if I would combine those two and merge them, 
then this would be on its own layer. And then I can even duplicate that over and start putting them side by side. That is how I made my really clean lines of this right here. All of these real clean lines, all of these real clean lines were made in that way. I made a really nice one, nice, really clean, perfect line, as good as I could get it, like these right here. And then what I did was I either lengthened it, shortened it, made it a little bit wider, whatever the case may be, and then started duplicating them over until I had a nice clean pattern. That's even a little bit on the mechanical side, I would say. But that's what I wanted, and it is up to you how you make yours. We'll go back to this one. And there's our single. But now if we make a, a, a just a nice set, we will make a nice set, but we're going to put it on its own layer again. So we could isolate it and then put it into the brush creator library. And uh, we'll make that one down here. And we're going to make it a little bit bigger just so we can see what we're doing here. Okay, now what I will do is let's go with this one and we're going to go like this. Now what I want is this one might be a little bit of trouble. I can even uh, try it. We'll try it. But then what we'll do is then go up to our eraser, take down the opacity. And what I mean by that is we have to be careful not to make any kind of lines that if it has like a strong hook on it or anything like that, that will keep repeating itself over and over within your painting. That is something you may not want. Now what we'll do is dust these out till they disappear off into the paper. Let me make it a little bit bigger. There we go. Okay, I'll leave it right there like that. And now I'll get my selection tool and I will hold down the shift so I get a nice clean square. About right there. A little bit bigger. Okay, and then I will enter that. Now I want to put this into my brush library, so I will open that up. And go back to the watercolor brushes because that's where my experimental brush was right here feather one and i will go to the image library right here and all i have to do is hit this button right here and that i already did and it already put it in there that's it right there over the one we just made so now that we have that image in there i will deselect and now here's what we have to do i have to show you all the different settings of this particular type of brush because you can see what it's doing already and this is at 12 o'clock this is at three o'clock this is at six o'clock and that is at nine o'clock right there so we may want to change some of them things but what we'll do is start off with stroke first it's set at 500 that's fine size jitter is 10 that will be adjusted a little wee bit as you go so they're not all the exact same size and then the pen pressure, uh, the t uh, tilt is fine where it's at. Uh, in other words, this one is straight up, just a typical angle, the uh, 45. And then this one is straight across. The reason why is I don't want the height or the width to change as I give it pressure. Otherwise, they, they may get real long and narrow uh, or real short and fat, and I don't want that. I just want what I have right there to leave it the way it is and that's it okay and then we'll put that back and then the spacing is at set at 35 that means if i start making it let's make another layer first and if i start making it a line down that's what i'll get now that's not too bad but the spacing maybe let's try let's try 30 let's go with 45 and then that will put them a little wee bit further apart. Oh, 45. There it is. I'll get it eventually. And then now, uh, let's go with 
the black and now if I do it they're a little wee bit further apart that's a little wee bit better and then the spacing jitter will change up the distance between them the scatter will throw them a little bit to the left and the right depending on how much we want we don't want them too out of shape because if you start drawing along the edge of a bird which we will be here soon we want to be able to control where the feathers end okay and then let's go to shape we already have that the angle now it's at zero so now if i have if i'm holding my pen at six o'clock that's what i get i may not want that so if i put it at 90 now if i hold it at six o'clock that's what i get this is at three o'clock so i can even change that that only means where my pattern is going to start this is at three o'clock right here and that's not too bad that is kind of half decently natural drawing for me because i'll show you why that's going to be important and then the angle jitter uh, is going to just uh, change them a little wee bit from here to maybe over to here to back to here to back to there we don't want that changing too much but we also don't want them perfectly stacked one on top of each other otherwise then you'll start to get a striped effect that will be real long and striped and it will start creating its own pattern if they don't overlap in a kind of like a perpendicular kind of way okay all of these are off follow the brush size uh that's it and then the paint uh the glaze i have a glaze we can put on normal i don't think that matters then the only thing i don't want is any kind of paper texture uh contrast or anything that has to do with uh changing the textures of it that's why we don't have any textures at all i just want a nice uh crisp line of each line that we made here i want that to come out okay that's done now let's see what this brush could do we'll start it back here uh, this is our single we could even select that keep that and then you could randomize that and then you'll only be putting one down at a time but you could also randomize that so you could have more control because keep in mind as you drag it down you'll be putting like maybe at least a dozen or so just in that length so depending on how you want that to work you could also use that but right now let's go ahead and see what this one would work up against our bird okay i'll zoom back in a little bit just so you can see what we're doing now we'll go to the oils for this one i gotta made it into an oil brush but i didn't but what we can do though is just start with like just like a, a flat bristle or anything along those lines because what you're going to do i'll just use this hairy brush what i'll do is it get me started on the pattern i want to start with i'll go with the raw umber and then just I'm not going to go by any reference or anything. I just want to show you what we're going to do with this. And then I'll add some unbleached titanium. And then we will go to the blend. And I'm just going to blend a little bit just to show you how I'll get started. And then right now with that hairy brush what we'll do is we'll start our pattern already let's see what it looks like they're going this way so that's what we do then keep in mind we'll just turn that off then what we could do is put a little wee bit of red in and then now what i will do is let's go with uh the potter's pink uh, first, oh, I got to change brushes first, and then I'll go back to that brush. But now here's what I want to do. Now, I'm holding it at 3 o'clock right now, and it's still not like I would want it right there. Now, this is at about 1 o'clock, but all I have to do is hold the R key down and just spin it a little bit, and then now I'm holding it back at 3 o'clock. So now if I take these and put the red down this is the kind of pattern i will get and i'm trying to follow you can see where i'm going but then how those lines that's just a typical red nothing special 
but how those lines are going to start covering over my base coat. And then I even get, I can make it a little bit smaller and then go to uh, just say uh, like a, an unbleached white. And if I start putting that over it, it's going to start getting pretty complicated. Now, if we start enlarging it, this is already a 200%. And now you won't even barely see the white up against a lighter white background. But then I could also then make it bigger. That's too big. All right there. Then let's go with like even like uh, just to so you could see the difference the sepia right here and then keep in mind you can see now if this say for example if this was in a shadowed area that is where I would make these darker so in other words they could be the base coat and then go back to my uh, let's try the quinacridone gold and then obviously i could change up i'm not changing the opacity or anything just to give you a rough idea what's going on here but how quick we made this brush and how we will get this particular end result and then go back to the unbleached titanium and these will be the foremost feathers you'll see up on top and then again if I make this we'll go to a darker color just so you could see it then make this smaller too small and if I start going back up in here I could take them right around the side of the head just the way I want to just like that there's no base coat here, but I just want to show you how I can follow all the different ways. If I, if I start going this way, now I'm up at around 1 o'clock again. That's about 12 o'clock, the way I have it tilted. I just retilt it, but then again, like I said, if I straighten it all up, and you can see how what this particular type of feather brush would do and this this is a very fine pattern but keep in mind but because we took the time to make that brush it will really uh, do things for you in a hurry just like that and I'm just constantly watching my brush and now that the brush will show what it's doing that's perfect and that's it and then again like I said if I want to put some really lighter color back over I get a little bit bigger now that we're going back down and what it'll do is also diffuse the feathers you got underneath to the point where it's going to soften up some of the edges of the other ones and what I'm just trying to do is build up complexity of layers. There's deeper layers down underneath the shadows. And then also uh, just build them up to what would be the, the brightest, uh, most feathers to the top of the bird, so to speak. And that's it. That would be how we could make feathers. And we will do the same thing with fur. But again, I'm not worried about colors or anything or trying to match up. I'm just showing you what kind of patterns it will produce. And again, if I go back here, now remember, if I want to go over here, then I may have to flop that particular pattern, flop it over, because this one's going out. I want it to go in. So that way, this way it'll go in. That way, if I flop this, then this side will be over here, and then I'll be able to go around this edge real nice. But you could see that now, with just at the, uh, the size it is now, if I can make these even a little bit bigger, let's spend some time here. 
and what I'll do is make them a little bit bigger and then you could see if we put these close to the end now we can erase that one but then now just say for example if I want to go over that branch then you'd be able to really see uh, what the edge of the feathers look like and if I want to tone those down to keep in mind again this is where it comes in handy where if I make these really big put them on their own layer well, let's say about right there what I want to show you is then transparent lock go back to a typical brush and we'll tone the opacity way down and we'll go to a lighter color even red tip and then that's it now we can make the tips of those brushes red if you want a multicolored feather and I'm just dusting it on but because I have the transparent lock on it's only going to touch the feathers themselves and that is it we could do that also and build this up over here which would be pretty uh, easy with a brush like this putting down some base coat colors and then just end up with it and keep in mind you can only put these here and there if you want to just to pick out a couple of fuzzy uh, feathers sticking out over a branch or over its feet uh, or out at the edge of its chest you don't have to put that pattern everywhere if you don't want. Uh, just select it, pick and choose here and there, just to draw a little bit more detail uh, to certain areas, which is always a uh, an attention grabber when you have tight texture and detail. Let's go on to the fur. Okay, let's go ahead and start our fur. Uh, what I did was I went ahead and took the liberty of opening up our fawn picture and enlarged it some so we could see some of the fur now you can see here that this fur right up in here on top of the ribs area is kind of wavy but then this fur down here is kind of linear but it's like slowly sloping up and then it curls down right where the hind leg is and what we'll do is duplicate this waviness first but I will show you, I went ahead and made two already. And what I wanted to show you though too, was that these are going to be a little bit different than the feathers. I'm making splotches now. I'll make one from scratch right now. We'll just call it fur three. But what I wanted to do is put fur one and fur two next to each other to show how I want to be able to interlock them if I want to use two different brushes uh, on the same project. So what we will do is turn these off and we'll just make a fur three. And I'll just show you how I made it. And what I did was just use my bloom brush, real small. And then what I wanna do is though, is on this one, we're going to not make everything pure black. So if I take my brush and I don't want no water obviously, and the opacity is down. I'm going to choose, uh, let's go with, start with light gray. And then what I'll start with is just starting a pattern. Just like this. And again, we're going to make it so it's, it's an open pattern. In other words, they'll be able to join end to end. And this is how I made it. Now we can make the tufts of hair a little wee bit thicker in the middle but then I'll also go with a dark gray and then even a black on top of these now keep in mind we can even kind of make these a small work of art in itself what I mean by that I could even use my okay let me get that one in I could even use my transparent lock and then that way if I start adding darker values over these then they'll only be on the line itself. Now these are a little bit on the fuzzy side too since I'm using my bloom brush. They're not perfectly straight 
hard edged lines. And depending on what you want to create, that's up to you. But then we can put some curls in them. And again, this is where I would start. But then now to vary the paint when we go to put it down, then what I could do is put on my transparent lock and go to a darker gray and then even take the opacity up a little bit. And then in the middle of these little tufts, I can make it a little bit darker. And it obviously doesn't have to be everyone. Just here and there. And then I'll go all the way up to black. And I'll show you why this may help you. We go to black and then take it up a little bit more. And if I start making this even a darker black, you could see it. I'll zoom in so we could see what we're doing here. And then now this is already 250%. So this will give you a really good idea what these will look like. And then I can even blend these out, being that I have the transparent lock on, and not have to worry about breaking up my original fur pattern that I started with. But what I want to show you though, is these hairs, go back to the light gray, feather this one out a little wee bit more, just like this. Up, oh, transparent lock. And just make it sharper into a point, just so it, it more or less disappears. And when we enlarge it like this, we can obviously get a little bit more critical and more detail into our pattern. But now what I want to show you is where these are going to be darker. That's where the paint will obviously be the heaviest. But what I want to show you is if we take a cross section, uh, any of this fur, that fur comes out from the skin and it goes down. So in other words, if it's a cross section, then it may look like this. It may be coming off, I'll start right there, off of the skin and going up and over. And it's going to overlap like this. My point is where that fur goes down towards the skin, where you can see down through the fur, then if we shadow this down a little bit, and make it disappear off into the shadows, then you'll create more of a three-dimensional look of how that hair is a lumpy in sections instead of just flat lines going across and calling it fur. This way, if the individual hairs do not transition, or I should say gradate, from real intense color down to a very light shadow color or the color behind it, the base layer, then you're not going to be creating uh, just more or less like a rounded effect of the hair. They're all going to be just like one line floating on top of each other. And that is the effect you may get. Now, if that's what you want, then that's definitely how you could do it. In other words, then these would be extremely dark black, just like the feathers to the very end. But what I'm doing now is just more or less put the transparent log back on. Then I can even blend this out and then just leave that darker black there. And this could be another brush already. We will go ahead and erase this. And then that way we could keep this one as fur number three. But what I want to do now is show you, we'll take it down a little bit. And we'll take, I already have this one brush in. And just to show you what it will look like, this brush right here, I already made it. That is the pattern number one right here. I already made this into a brush, and I'll show you. And then you can see how this one is a little bit tinier than this one. And then this one is a little wee bit more coarse. But I'll show you what these will look like now. We'll go to the painting up here. And I'll turn this off and this off. And what I will do is go to my oil. And there is the flat dry. I have it ready to go. And we're going to start off with raw umber. And I'm just going to create a base of hair. And you can see it's already starting just by going back and forth. 
in a, like a basket weave type faction. And then I'm going to add a little bit of quinacridone gold. And I'm just going to blend those in just to get a little bit of depth and color value change. And that white I'm pulling in from the paper, which is fine. Okay, let's start with that. Now, just to see what this will look like, I'll add a layer. And then go to my watercolor brushes, which is the fur right here. And you can see that's the fur. Now, even just to see what this will look like, I'll go to my unbleached titanium white. I could even put it up all the way to 100%, but then we'll, we could change the opacity of this layer just to see what it'll look like. And I'll show you what I mean. Now, here's one other thing I want to show you. Now, if we look at this closely, we're getting vertical lines in here, right here. We're getting vertical lines in here that is showing up and that is the paper texture. So what I want to do is I'll undo everything. And just to give you an example of how we can work this, you can either go up here and take down the uh, actual texture influence of the paper all the way to zero. That is one way of eliminating some of that problem. Or what I do is I go back and I get out my white simple paper and select it and then that's it now I won't get that pattern because I eliminated the uh, arches or and or handmade paper texture okay now if I do this now again remember we're gonna put this now we're not getting any uh, vertical lines and you'll see that once I cut back Okay, there, and we'll put one right here, right there, one right there. Now, if I take the opacity down, and you can see where that's going to start to look like fur, and that way uh, it's already beginning to look like fur. Now, if that's too coarse, then I could just eliminate that layer and then add a new layer and then make the brush a little bit smaller. And then try that. And again, I'll leave it all the way up to 100%. And we'll mix. Well, actually, what we'll do this time is we'll take the opacity of the brush down. Let's go down to about, eh, let's try about 20 or so around in there. And then now if I put this down with unbleached titanium, eh, that's looking a little bit better. So now this lighter fur over top that base is starting to give us a pattern of fur already of up here of the wavy fur down here is more linear and then it curves up so if we want to duplicate that now what we could then do is on this layer that is this layer right here put on the transparent lock and then I can even go back to any type of a brush we can even go with the Kleenex and just dust some color on. And if we want to control it real nice, then I can actually, if I want to pull out some white spots here and there, and then just make them a little bit brighter, I'll go back to the unbleached titanium. And then let's say, for example, these right in here, if I want to make them a little bit brighter, then I could just lighten them up a little bit. And that could be a tuft of hair here and there, hair and there. And now I'm only working on the hair. So this down here, but then this right here looks like an open shadow already. And then if I maybe whiten up this a little bit, but then what I can also do is then obviously pull out a color of my background and then make some of these disappear into the background like right there let them sink in and then if I want some darker colors I could even go back and create a layer either on that layer or another layer above it and then take a darker 
color and make some texture underneath like right in here and what I'll be doing is making fur darker fur behind the lighter color fur I already did so then it will start to really build up now keep in mind this hair is kind of loose and not real straight edge but then again we are already at 300 percent now for me if I take this to 62 percent that is what I would see at print size so if I do that, this is what I would get. So that's actually not too bad at all. That is about uh, the scale and proportion to what is up here. The picture is a little wee bit bigger, but then keep in mind, this is all going to depend on how big my painting of my fawn would be. If it's a fairly small painting, then you may not even see individual hairs. It might be better off just to gob up the uh, color changes and that's it instead of trying to create individual hairs unless maybe you want to just put some at the edge like say for example right in here uh, or these longer hairs or even the tail itself might be able to use some individual hairs but you can see how wavy these are so if you want some wavy hairs then we can even create a brush like that also but for the fur starting with the waviness of the top of the ribs like right in here right in here through here then i could actually go back in and create with my kleenex some of these and put a right here that's these right here and then make some of these a little bit whiter for the white spots and even make some a little bit of a lighter cast behind the white so it looks like multiple hairs are creating that white spot and not just the very hairs on top and that is it and then keep in mind if we wanted to then even put another layer over that we could even do that and that would be nothing more than just taking our brush again and uh, make it a little bit bigger and a little bit more opaque and a little bit more color we'll go back and then right here there's a little tuft there and if i go back in and again i'm watching the angle of each individual hair and then again i could go back in and change these and then even if you want to soften all of these up then you could actually even uh, just take a uh, soft edge brush like my Kleenex. All those brushes for my watercolors are posted on the Escape Motions uh, site itself. So you can uh, download those and work with those if you want. But as far as making the fur, then this would be a pretty good start to get you started. Because keep in mind, all I did was put down a very simple base coat and then started with our one and only brush that we made. So depending on how many different brushes you want to make, that will also uh, help you too as far as what you want to differently do. Now, let me go back and show you one last little thing of this same type of brush, and that'll be it. Okay, we'll go back, and I will show you one last thing here, and that is in my trees section. This is the right here. And that is just a simple couple branches I made of pine trees, just like this. I'll take them down a little bit. And this is the same effect that we've just been doing. And that is with a pen tilt, I could turn this branch, pine branch, any way I want. And just to get started. So if I want a couple of branches, now let's go with the dark green. The ones are, ones are green. And I'll just put a couple down. And we'll put a couple here. And I have this one set on pressure also. So we could make them like this, like this. And depending on how we want the branches to go, because then keep in mind as they go up towards the top, they're going to get more and more angled like this. 
and then I can even put some right here in the middle and that is it and then you could have a, a pretty quick pine tree but then again keep in mind same thing if I put my transparent lock on and then go back to some lighter greens then I can actually even work in I'll zoom in I can even work into some lighter greens here and there but if I keep that same stamp brush down then I'll know that I'll only be able to put that type of shape down and not just like a rounded brush or anything like that they'll still stay with the texture so if I want to go back even to a bright yellow take the opacity down and if I want to add some really bright highlights to this pine tree and then I will go back over because keep in mind I, I wouldn't want I go over that um, much more detail in that particular demo I, I wouldn't want just branches going to the left branches to the right there's also going to be branches coming right at you at different angles and then that way I could go ahead and do that also and then that is it and now if we go down and then that could be the start of a pretty quick pine tree and uh, just even one right here on top oh, we got the transparent lock on enough opacity we'll remove that one that one doesn't look like the top of a tree nope too far to the right that's the scatter there we go that's not too bad this is a little bit heavy right in here but we could change that up too again like I said and then you can make the tree as dense and as thick as you want just by going over different areas here and there but as long as we stay with that one brush then you'll make a pretty quick pine tree and I did a whole painting like that with this particular system so you could take a look and make some of these areas darker and again we can even start off with a real dark shape and then put some lighter values over it and again make them multiple layers just so if you want to uh, shade individual uh, stamps then you could do that also but that is the same system that we used for the fur because now that you have a direction that if I want a branch going straight out I will have some jitter but then if I want them to start curving up towards the top of the tree till they go to the very top and just be the very top of the tree itself then that's what I'll get with that particular brush and again this is digital and we can always undo if you don't like it and there's another tree different shape but they will be one thing nice about this is it's not an entire tree stamp they will be as unique as you could get them each and every tree you make this way will be unique depending on your placement of each branch and that's about it uh, hopefully you uh, picked up something from this demo I just tried to give you some ideas of what you could do and how you could do it uh, again, all the different demos will be listed down below if you want to watch the pine tree demo. Uh, it is pretty uh, in-depth also, and it will show you how I just actually traced a branch from a photo and made a stamp out of it, which if you don't even want to try any of your own freehand drawing skills, you can even do it that way if you want to. But in the meantime, with the fur and feathers, they are handled a little wee bit different. The fur is a little bit softer, a little bit fuzzy edges to try that. And that would be this end result right here. And then just up here, this fur kind of wavy. It'll get you started. We could take it lighter. We could do whatever we want. But with a transparent lock, you could go back in and just isolate certain areas if you want to make them brighter or uh, make some lines uh, of just like maybe a burnt sienna, just add some... Uh, shadows in there a little bit stronger shadows here and there and then keep in mind we would have to also 
shade the whole animal depending on what kind of light it is and what kind of shape you're shading so not only will you have to create the fur texture but you'll have to be shading the animal at the same time with all that said i hope you got something out of this demo it's been a while since i did a digital one and until i see you out in the field or back at the studio thanks for watching